Good evening, everyone. My name is Janelle Weekly. I'm the Photographic Collections Manager at the Arizona State Museum, and I want to welcome you to this program coming to you from the Arizona State Museum on the campus of the University of Arizona. Both are situated on land that has always been home to Indigenous peoples. Today, the greater Tucson area is home to the O'odham and Pascoyaki. Tonight's talk is part of a series of programs presented in conjunction with Arizona State Museum's exhibit, Light Handlers, Indigenous Photographers in the Southwest. The exhibit is the culmination of our initiative to acquire work by contemporary Indigenous photographers. With the help of a generous grant from the Mellon Foundation, we have been able to do just that over the past year or so. And you can see all our acquisitions in the exhibit, which runs through July 20th. When our selection committee was searching for photographs to purchase with the Mellon Foundation funds, James J's graphic image COVID positive caught our attention and we knew it would be a great addition to ASM's collections, mostly because it was contemporary. It was about what was going on at the time we were looking for uh, photographs. And it was one of the first images we saw that related to the COVID experience. After we contacted him, he shared more images with us and we loved many. We had a difficult time selecting the four we finally acquired. James J. Akimel Atham and Tahona Atham is from Gila River Indian Community. He resides in Chandler and works as a multimedia designer for the Gila River Broadcasting Company. He has been photographing for over 30 years and he still uses film. His photographs are deeply personal and cross many genres from street photography to landscapes. His eye beautifully captures a variety of subjects and emotions. His photographs often capture small moments. He observes ordinary daily life and he does not shy away from any topic. Tonight, we are pleased to have James share with you his photographs and his stories. Please welcome James J. All right, hello. Um, thank you, Janelle, for the introduction and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my work here on and on the walls of the Arizona State Museum. It's been an amazing opportunity. Um, she already gave an introduction. So, I mean, that's me right there in case you were wondering what I look like. <laughs> um, Let's see. So first off, I wanted to share the cameras that I have used to take some of these photos. You have a Canonet QL17G3 up in the corner, uh, Olympus XA2, a Minolta Hymatic AFD2, a Konica Tomato. Yeah, that's a real name. Uh, Leica M6, Olympus Stylus, Yashica GSN, a Vivitar CV35, which is a toy camera and plastic, has a plastic lens and a Konica Pop. All these cameras I have at least used once in their life and some way more than others. Uh, so I was kindly asked by Janelle Weekly to do a talk about some of my photos. My talk today is named, Today is Work Remembering. These are photos and moments that I wanted to remember and wanted to share with you all. So let's get started. Photos I remember. Photos from my dad that he printed in a dark room. He was in a program where they had to go out and take pictures of canals in the community. And these are, when he wasn't taking photos, those photos, he was taking photos of things around him, such as these, such as these photos of me and him. So these are dark room prints. This is his best friend at a house party. I love this because this is what I do, just take pictures of people and moments. This is a photo his friend took of him looking at neg negatives on a light table. I really do love his hair in these photos. This is from like 80 or 81. Remembering the day on film. So these are my photos and let's get in them. This photo was taken in Seattle and one I really love. I love how the light is coming through the window and illuminating him. It's such a simple and quiet photo. This photo was taken in Coolidge, Arizona at the local bar called the Galloping Goose. 
this was taken in almost complete darkness. Something I learned from my general reading is in the military, snipers, when they take a deep breath and then they exhale before pulling the trigger. I use that same trick when taking slow photos. Usually it works pretty good, as you can see. This photo is on my great grandmother. This is our old family mud house that we would all pile into on Christmas and New Year's Eve. When I mean family, it would be cousins, uncles, grandparents, everyone. I also lived in this house when I was born. Those photos in the beginning my dad took are in front of this house. So this is at the parking swap here in Phoenix. I had used my Canon out range finder for this photo. I was still getting used to framing, which is why his feet are cropped. I have a hard time showing this photo because of that, but I love that she's smiling and looking at me. To me, that makes it acceptable. You sometimes have to take the photo as is, even though you really want to change it. This one is just great to me. I had decided to walk the half mile to lunch at the McDonald's down the road. As I came around the corner, I saw this man eating in his truck and his dog just hanging out in the back. This was taken on the Olympus XA camera. I missed being able to carry that one with me. Sadly, the electronics finally gave out. This is my grandmother, my dad's mom and her dog, Paco. <laughs> Rest in peace, Paco. This is during my dad's first death memorial. So, um, she looked so hurt and she also looked like she was taking comfort in Paco's company. His photo is also placed on the mantelpiece above her head. Me and my friend Mahayo had taken a photo walk in Tempe and rode the light rail to downtown Phoenix. I had seen this man sitting with and feeding the birds. I had taken this photo and later realized I totally forgot to change my exposure. That's the one thing about film and manual cameras. You constantly have to think about distance, exposure, shutter speeds. It's all a game, almost trying to take all those things into consideration to create a photo. Leaving Vegas and I saw this gentleman across from me, I took about three photos. This is definitely the perfect outfit for Vegas. I love the snake on his hat, the cards on his boots. I hope he won something when he was there. So these next photos are paired together. I love looking through photos and seeing how similar some of them are. These first photos are babies. For whatever reason, for some odd reason, babies always stare at me. I really like the sad baby on the left. I really dig these leg tattoos. <laughs> I love how they both have them on the same leg and how different the footwear is. I really love that he is not afraid to show his love for Mickey Mouse and Fantasia and how old it is and faded. Then you have the girl's moon on the tattoo that's so vibrant. On the topic of footwear, here we have my coworker. I always love my coworker's unique footwear. I love that in the next frame, the woman doesn't even care. Her feet are so tired, she decided to take off those heels. These older ladies, both gambling at the casino, having the same expression, doing the same thing. I'm not too sure where the first one was taken at, but the second one was in Florida at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino. I was in San Antonio when I happened across this man reading. I remember it was so hot and muggy that day, yet he was outside reading in the direct sunlight. The second was taken here in Phoenix, also on a hot summer day. I love how he's not in the shade, but also the direct light. This photo was taken with the Konica Pop. Both of these photos are taken from my car and during the middle of summer. I was sitting at the light and saw this Paletta man pushing his cart. I grabbed my Canonette, guessed distance, and held it ready to get the frame. As the light changed, I was able to get this photo while passing. The second photo is from my driver's seat while it was parked at the post office. I had seen the mail clerk pushing in the afternoon mail. He looked so tired and defeated from the summer sun. Different times and different ages, but both gentlemen. People seem to not pay attention in airports, so it's a fun spot to take tons of photos. I just love the intimacy that comes from airports. I have seen this couple in LA and snapped two frames, and not once did they notice me. 
at a different airport while waiting for my bag at baggage, baggage claim. I saw this couple embracing it, embracing, and it was such a great moment I was able to capture. A moment worth remembering, even it is, if it is just for me. When we lived in Tempe, we would walk to the Circle K on the corner, even just to go to the store, I make sure to carry my camera. I remember seeing this man looking completely defeated, looking over his engine. I think this photo is one we all have lived before, looking down at the engine of your car and not sure what to do next. These next couple photos are community events here in Gila River taken with my Leica M6. I love taking photos at community events. Everyone seems to be more open and willing to get their photos taken. It gives me the opportunity to capture photos like this, a man dancing with this small child. I always love how cowboys, cowboys always have to have the biggest belt buckle. These young cowboys seem to be heading in that direction as well. Um, basket dancers at the cultural circle. Um, I really like this frame. I think it came out good. The herd hoop dance. I always try to get close to the drummers. They're always willing to let me get in their space and take photos. It's always such an experience being so close. You can feel that drum through your whole body. It's a feeling I want to remember, which is why I took that photo. This is my mom's old home, which first belonged to my grandmother and grandfather. I remember being a small child, spending days playing in this back room and later living in that room with my whole family. I always remember looking at this huge mesquite tree outside the window. This view has always stuck with me. I really wanted to remember the view before the house got um, torn down. In most cases, people are very accepting of my photography and are willing to get their photo taken. I was sitting in the passenger seat with the window rolled down and noticed this gentleman I love that he's a little shy, but smiling and a little amused by the situation. This photo was taken in San Antonio. When I'm in a different city, I always make it a point to take a walk to take photos. As I was walking, I noticed this man leaning on a pole at the bus station. I literally had time to raise the camera to my eye, frame and press the shutter. This frame is literally a split second caught in time. Right after this photo, he came off the post and walked off. People say you need to fill your frame to get closer to your subject, but I always enjoy taking these wide photos of scenes. There's so much going on in this frame, the people on the bench, the guy leaning on the pillar, and finally the lady sitting on, on the chain, not, you know, it totally makes this photo for me. This gentleman, I'm pretty sure, did not like his photo being taken. He didn't say much. I'm pretty sure I heard a grumble. I find this photo interesting for the fact at the time, I didn't know I was recording something we don't see much these days, someone using a payphone. It's rare seeing those nowadays. Another public phone image. I'm drawn to the signage in the background, both individuals staring off in opposite directions and each doing something with their hands. I saw this scene and ran to photograph it. I already had my exposure set, so I focused and ended up with this frame. Right after this, the bus started moving. This was taken at Ranch Market in South Phoenix. In a lot of cultures, every part of the animal is eaten and you're told not to waste everything. Every time I see this photo, it reminds me of a time when for work, we attended our local farms company barbecue we have volunteered to help at the event. Um, they have pulled the meat from an uh, underground pit where they cooked the meat. As we were se separating the meat from the bones, they pulled out the head and all the old goody or old men in Otham got super excited and began eating meat from the skull and saying, this is the best part. And yeah, that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> I realized there are not so happy moments that occur in our travels and I feel those should also be remembered. Those moments I feel are what a lot of photographers tend to ignore, or don't recognize. I feel as if these photos, those memories, they help us grow as individuals. I feel that you and your camera should tell those stories as well. These next photos, I feel do that.
I made it a point to live within 10 miles of the office to commute back and forth on my bicycle. It's a great way to see the world around you and to separate yourself from the day. Before I even got near the scene, I heard the crash and knew what was going to ha what I was going to come upon. I got to the light and saw this scene. In situations like this, you want to help, but you also don't want to get in the way. There were a few people already helping out, and I made the decision to not involve myself. Side note, if it was just me and it just happened, I would definitely help in this situation. Me and my wife had gone to a concert earlier in the evening, and on the way home, we saw these huge plumes of smoke. We, la we later learned we had come across a five-alarm fire. We pulled into the lot across the street where other people had already gathered to watch. I only had the one roll in my cannonet and decided I was going to finish it here. This is also another scene where you want to get close, but not too close. I always try to make myself blend in and not cause a scene, being sure not to cross the barriers that are set in place. Here I am trying to push it even further to get close. Sitting in the back of the work truck, and we came upon this guy with his truck on fire. It started small, but quickly grew out of control. As we passed, I knew I had a split second to take this photo. I guessed distance and waited till we passed the truck. I saw the truck in my viewfinder and I pressed the shutter. Another split second photo. As you can see, the negative has a scratch. I've always been wanting to keep all the images full frame and not edit too much which is why the scratch line remains. These next photos are very meaningful to me, and I'm sure most people would not take these kind of photos, but I feel as though I need to, that these memories also need to be remembered. Here we are digging my grandfather's grave. Yes, these are sad occasions, but on the other hand, you end up seeing your cousins, uncles, friends, everyone pitches in. And yes, you end up with the guy who just stands around and directs the crew. You, you also get the jokers who are constantly cracking jokes. Um, can you guess who is who in this photo? This is my grandfather. We got to be with him in his last moments, and this is just after he passed away. I know it can be frowned upon to photograph the dead, but I selfishly want to remember them in their last moments before going into the next world. His hands looked so huge when I was a kid. Seeing them here, they are still big, but also smaller in a way and older. I also love that he still has his watch on too. This is my nephew Reese holding the cross from my grandfather. This is right after we lowered him into the ground. It's everyone's job to pitch in and as you get older, you get more responsibility. For now, this is Reese's job to hold our loved one's marker. I love that all the men and boys are gathered together and the table and shadow and the tent shadow lead to Reese and then falling to the grave. Sorry, needed some water. Um, this is my dad's grave, which is located on my family's property. My mom wanted to keep him close to the family home. So his ashes are buried there. The house in the back is my great aunt's house, which no one lives in. This land has been the home of my grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents. So I'm going to switch it up, um, remembering the day in color. I wanted to include some color photos as well. Color for me has always been a difficult thing. With black and white, you're only considering, you know, those tones. With color, you have a lot more elements to consider. Um, this photo was taken in Chicago with my Leica M6. Seems like, seems like those are funny for me. I love how he's staring down at his phone while dragging the dogs behind him. I've already touched on how I like to commute to the office using my bicycle. The downside is, to this is you see a lot of animals that, that have been injured and, and, you know, are left. I had come across this kitty that looks like he was sleeping, and I love that someone lovingly wrapped him in a towel. Another photo taken with my Olympus XA2 point and shoot. This frame was also taken in Chicago. I love this. I, I love the this photo. Looks like these women came from the 50s or 60s. The only thing that gives it away is the modern vehicles in the background. 
I wanted to include this photo because like I said earlier, I also like to use toy cameras. For this photo, I used the, that Vivitar CB35 camera. This was the plastic camera I pictured in my camera photos earlier. I love the fact that this camera I picked up at the Goodwill for less than $5 made this image. I love the white leading lines, how the elderly are following those lines on the ground, the reds and also the blue color. Also, the fact the camera blurred their faces makes it even better. I had stopped to take this photo of this man. I, I really love this smile. He then asked me for money. I told him I had none, which I really didn't have any. Had no bills or anything. And then his smile quickly disappeared. <laughs> I really like coming across photos like this. Flying, you know, flying is such a tiring thing. Photos like this make me laugh. Someone had described my photography as darkly comical. Um, I think it comes across in, a lot in photos like this and the next one. Um, this was at Disneyland, so, you know, you spend enough time there, you end up looking like this dad with his kid, just passed out wherever you can. My mother had asked me to drive her to Gila Bend for her sister's funeral, so we drove to this little village right outside Gila Bend. This small church is the original church the village would worship at. I had used uh, my Olympus XA2 for this photo. The cameras I sometimes use need to be worked on, and in this case, the light seals needed to be replaced. All the frames from this roll have some kind of light leak on them. I know this is a flaw technically, but I find it beautiful in this frame. When I'm broke, I shoot digital. This is, this is the fact. <laughs> when I don't have money for developing or even you know, to buy film, I usually switch to using my digital camera. I've only owned two digital cameras, a uh, Ricoa GRD3, which was praised for its film-like photos. And currently now I'm using a Fuji X-T or X100T. This photo was taken during Unity mid-year in Phoenix. The contrasts are what grabbed my attention. The modern footwear mixed with these traditional but modern skirts. The colors and lines in this frame are so over overwhelming. I love it. I've been wanting to print this one. Here are some photos that I felt work together again. Um, more children staring at me at different times. Same restaurant, different times. I love how both gentlemen are almost eating the exact same thing. I can really relate to this photo as I drown my food and ketchup too. It grosses my wife out all the time. <laughs> Out in the community, I saw this boy tying up the dog so they wouldn't jump out of the bed of the truck. I like the care he has for the animals. I think it's just a good photo, community photo. Some of my favorite photos to take are dogs, their heads hanging out the window. You can always see the joy in their faces. I saw this and needed to take a photo. This dog looks like he has a story to tell. <laughs> I also think he looks like a person. Just a common sight in Vegas where anything goes. <laughs> Me and my wife, Talia, just had finished watching the ballet, and in the elevator we saw this couple. The tired expressions are what grabbed my attention. This photo also reminds me of that Robert Frank photo titled Elevator Girl. You have to look for that photo after the talk. This photo was taken at the Herd Museum hoop dance competition. I was walking back from the restroom and saw this gentleman in the grass against a white wall, the sunlight illuminating him. I walked back to our tent and said, and in my head, I was all like, you need to go back and get a photo. I grabbed my camera and went back and started to fire frames. My digital camera is weird and sometimes doesn't get the horizon line right. So sometimes I have to tilt my camera a little to compensate which is why I shot more than one photo. Luckily, he went and leaned on the wall. I just thought it was amazing that a shirt matched the sidewalk. I think this is one of the favorite, one of my, the favorite frames that I've made in a while. One day on the way home, I saw flames in the nearby neighborhood. I grabbed my camera and went to see what was happening. I started to take photos of the firefighters, trying to get close, but not too close, as I said before. 
you aren't trying to change the moment. You just want to capture it from afar. I know it's sitting on the curb, a mother with a baby in a laundry basket filled with pampers. I thought about taking that photo, but there are some moments you just have to pull back from. You don't want to take advantage of the situation because that at the, at the end of the day, we're just people. This is home. And it reminds me that we are an agricultural people. On the way from home from Las Vegas, I wanted to stop and take some photos of the Joshua trees. I actually had crawled under the fence to make my way deeper into the denser parts of the trees. I was shooting with my Ricoa GRD3 against the sunlight. Um, I love how this turned out with the blown out sun and the light bouncing off the cactus. A man collecting cans with his dog. I saw this frame and had a split second to take it. I raised my Ricoa and fired. Later I noticed I had un hadn't even adjusted my exposure, but it came out okay in the end. Just a man asleep, listening to his podcast or music, who knows. What I find interesting is the lady on the side, she's not upset with her, with her reaction was more, so what's so special about the man sleeping? This photo was taken during a summer evening at a ballet performance that, that Ballet Arizona does in a part titled Ballet Un Under the Stars. It's a free event for everyone to attend. I have went behind the stage and took some photos of the dancers as they performed. I wanted it to, to just be the dancers illuminated, not, you know, no people in the frame. This one had like hundreds of views on my blog when I had posted it. During the summer, kids in my old neighborhood would jump over the gate to get into the pool. And, you know, it was hot, you know, who can blame them? Um, this photo just screams summer to me. Here's another casino photo that I had taken at one of our casino grand openings. I love the grand openings for the fact you're able to take photos without any security getting angry. I love this man and how he looks so stylish at the slots. I had needed a ride home from work one day and asked my coworker who was on the way to the gym to just take me down the road and I will walk the rest of the way home. Uh, turned out it was really far. <laughs> and But I did catch this photo as I was crossing the street, the sun bright and totally illuminating her sunglasses. This is one of my favorites. Um, Black Fridays are always a great time. They were a great time to shoot photos. There was so much chaos and it was always so intense. As you can see in this photo, the guy, the guy clutching DVDs for his dear life. I'm sure everyone was excited to receive the Big Bang Theory for Christmas that year. This photo was taken in Las Vegas. For some odd reason, this photo really haunts me. It totally tells the separation in Vegas that exists the tall casinos in the background, people walking the strip, and then there's a car with the sunroof open and people yelling and having a great time with no care in the world when I took it. And then finally, the lone man sleeping on the sidewalk. I, I don't usually take photos of the homeless, but this frame, like I said, really speaks to me. I've tried many times to edit it and print it, but it never looks the way I want it, and I'm still working on it now. The next couple of photos are of my family and really personal to me. Um, this is my great grandmother's hand while she was in our community caring house. This is where a lot of our elderly, elderly are able to be together and if need to spend their last hours of life. They provide care that sometimes the family can't. She was um, surrounded by family and I had noticed her hands. I remember these hands making her famous red chili stew for our family gatherings and you know, giving us hugs to her great grandkids. In her last day, she started to suffer from dementia and wouldn't remember who some of us were. She had looked at me and clearly says to me, hey, Sonny, and then smiled at me. This is the morning mass for Reese J on the day of his funeral. He died right at the start of the pandemic and only 10 people were allowed in the church. 
he was a well-known person because he worked in our community for a lot of years. It was such a small funeral with only, you know, family. I can only imagine what it would have been like if he died during normal circumstances. This is at the gravesite for Reese J. My nephew Reese once again holding the marker for Elder Reese and my grandmother being held by my aunt as she says goodbye to her brother for the last time. So in this next part, I wanted to show some things that I'm currently working on. Um, I've been taking more walks and bike rides around the neighborhood on my lunch break since I currently work from home. Lately, I've noticed my neighbor's style of patriotism. Here you have this graphic placed above a garage that I never really noticed until, before until I started walking. I thought it was very welcoming. Just kidding. <laughs> Here we have two flags, pretty much the same message message on both. I find the passion so funny in these photos. Like, yeah. I've re recently started to overexpose my color photos a bit to emulate a color film named um, Kodak Portra 160. I love the look of the actual film stock and have been trying to recreate that digitally to look the same. I think these photos are pretty close. I love the lightly muted reds in this photo, the flag across the garage, the cushions even, and the flag flowing in the wind, even the tail light of the car and the door, decoration by the front door. This is American as it gets. Ah, also, I've been working on getting this large amount of film developed. If I could, I would develop all these roles tomorrow. Long gone are the days of $6 processing at the local Walgreens. I have some film rolls in these bags that aren't even made anymore. The Kodak Portra 160 VC and NC. Those rolls Kodak gave away for free to the public on release. I had everyone I know sign up for the free rolls for me. There's even a rebranded film sold at Fry's Kroger stores, which was actually an Italian film stock name. Um, forgive me on the name, but it's um, Ferenia Solaris. I love the 200 speed film. The, um, this film gave amazing browns and reds. It was about 3 to $4 a roll at one time. That's the color film I truly do miss. I used to shoot that all the time. Um, my post, I wanted to share and talk and show some of my most important photos. These are photos that I hold dear to me and are truly personal. And they're all of my family. This is my mother-in-law, Evelina, as she was feeling my wife's Talia's tummy for our baby. My wife was so tired during the pregnant, the beginning of the pregnancy. During the pregnancy, she was losing amniotic fluid and the baby's home was getting smaller. The doctors had told my wife to, to soak in the tub, even the pool as much as possible so she could retain the fluid that she had. She would get tired laying on one side and would have to constantly rotate as seen in this photo. She, <laughs> she loved being able to sit on the yoga ball when she was in labor, it helped her at the time. Um, the doctors and nurses ended up having to take it away um, for, at one point because she was getting closer and you know, they were all like, you gotta get off of this. Here's my daughter and wife together. This was probably as I was leaving for work. Baby Chloe, about two months old in this photo. She always had crazy hair as a baby. Baby Chloe again in our second apartment, about 18 months old. Um, here she is in a freshman year of high school after an orchestra concert. She's currently a junior, um, next year being a senior. Oof. My wife and her lipstick. This was taken when she was trying on lipstick in a store. But it reminds me, during the pandemic, she would still put lipstick under her mask as she said she felt naked without it. Good color. My wife whistling around the house. She was probably doing the dishes. Um, soaking in a bubble bath this time, just for fun. Another bubble bath photo. I really like this one. Um, here's a photo of my mom, Winfrieda. My mother used to lead a traditional dance group of ladies and young ladies. She would teach them about why and how to dance properly. 
They will perform for events or even just to dance. At the moment, my mother is no longer able to perform or even dance. And I always hear her say she really misses it. This photo reminds me of the times when she was able to dance and share her gift. I know these young ladies and, you know, ladies look back and appreciate the lessons they learned from her. This is my little brother, Stuart. He is always the wild one, the skater, the fighter, the mischievous one. My grandmother used to jokingly call him Little Satan. <laughs> I look at this photo and see the years starting to add up on his face, and it makes me realize I'm getting older as well. We're not kids no more. Um, this is my little sister, Terry. As you can see, she values her privacy. Sorry about that, but I had to include that. Um, this is Terry's son, Reese. He currently lives in LA and was passing through with friends on his way to Texas to play at a DJ show. He always gives me great looks. This is from actually from a couple days ago. Um, this is an older photo of my nephew, Damien, Stewart's son, at one of his birthday parties. I like the playfulness of this photo and how the balloon obscures Damien's face. Damien is a great kid who currently loves the Super Mario Brothers. This is my niece, Cadence, Stewart's daughter. Um, when she was smaller, she was more prone to tears. As she got older, she got more rambunctious and would play and get dirty. I love, love her wild hair in this photo. This reminds me of her carefree days. Currently, she is a new mother to a little girl. This photo doesn't look like much, but it's the first time that my mother-in-law ever visited and went into the ocean. I shot it from far away to not involve myself in the scene. I want her to have it for herself. And lastly, this guy. My friend's daughter had found him in an empty lot near their bicycle shop. At the time, Talia, my wife, was volunteering at the Animal Welfare League in Phoenix. She was supposed to take him there. That was about 10 years ago. Uh, printing your work. Um, we only have two more sections left. I hope you're still hanging on. This section is about printing your work. In the beginning, most of my photos were posted to a blog on a service called Blogger. I then started a new one in 2007 titled, I Love the World I See. I still have it, but it, I haven't posted there in a while. Probably in the last 10 years, I started making photo zines. Um, my friend Mahal had made one with his photos and gave it to me. And right away, this was something I really wanted to do. Um, so I started calling photos and doing layouts. This came really easy because I had to do layouts for my job. I had titled them, I Love the World I See and wanted to continue self-publishing different volumes. I'm currently working on chapter three, which has been ongoing for a couple of years now. I just haven't found a layout of photos that I really want to share. This has probably been because of social media and how it's so easy to share a photo and then see it in print when almost be redundant. I've also been working on the design titled, a zine titled Melted Plastic. I want this one to feature exclusively images taken with plastic toy cameras. I had come up with this title after I had left an expensive camera in my car a Yashica T4 Zoom, a point-and-shoot camera I bought for like 15 bucks, which now sells for over $300. I forgot it in the car, and the next day I found it, and then the electronics would not work at all. All I could think about was the melted plastics inside. Then I would see my plastic cameras and make sure to bring those in whenever I was out using them. I've never had one melt in the car, but I can imagine coming out to the like a big blob of plastic, hence the title. The last section is about my photos in the is the exhibit Light Handlers, Indigenous Photograph, but photographers in the Southwest. First off, I would really like to say that I'm so honored to be part of this exhibit. And if you get the chance, I highly recommend visiting the exhibit and seeing not only mine, but the work of other great Indigenous photographers. This is titled COVID Positive and is a digital image I had created. I had made this after contracting COVID-19 and used the self-portraits that I made while locked in our office, this room right here. I set my camera on a tripod, guest focus, and set the self-timer. I included my symptoms and the color red on the image. All those little red squares I had placed remind me of COVID germs. 
floating in the air as well as with the COVID um, as the positive symbol also. Um, here's my working file on Photoshop and all my layers. This image is titled the community pool. This was right after a community event and during this time of year, it's really hot and humid. I saw the kids swimming and had to take a photo. The water is pumped up from the underground, so it's like really cold. This pool no longer exists and the memory probably only exists on this negative and the print. Now the community pool is a splash pad and the community building. As you can see on the negative strip, just little moments caught in time. Two, I took two photos and the kids sitting there and then the next is my daughter. This is titled St. Anne Catholic Church. This was Christmas Eve, 2016. It had rained all day and I was just clearing up. Um, it had rained all day and it was just clearing up as the evening came. I've tried to take photos of this church before. They never were to my satisfaction. We were driving to go to a family, uh, family friend's home and I saw the clouds floating low in the mountains and knew this was the day. I also took some film shots as well. They didn't come out as well. So these are the images that I made that day. I know they look totally different than what the final image looks like, but I used a software called Silver Effects Pro and used um, this film simulation part of the software. I primarily used the film setting of Fuji Neopan 1600, a film that I used to love to shoot. This is a film stock no longer made and would give these very contrasty images with lots of grain. I processed these images as I would like them to look if I was in the dark room and actually printing them. I try to always limit my editing of an image and usually try to make it look like it was shot on film. This is my final image simply titled Reese J. I talked about Reese J in this slideshow and showed his funeral in my photos. This day was Easter Sunday, which we had gathered on for a family dinner and Easter egg hunt. He, he usually would hate for me to take his photo. Most of the photos I have of him are blurry because he would always turn away. But on this day, he talked and even let me take photos of him. He was talking about um, how somebody had stolen his, stolen his lawnmower and <laughs> he had his BB gun set so he could shoot him. <laughs> I like to think he was so comfortable that day to be surrounded by loved ones and that he didn't even care. I'm not too sure what he would say about his photo hanging in a museum, but I would like to think he would say that was okay and I, that I did all right. Um, these are the photos I took of Reese, and as you can see, which one was chosen up at the top. I also use Silver Effects Pro and the exact same film simulation as I did on the church. Um, and that's it. That's my talk. Thank you all for attending and listening to me speak. I wanted to thank Janelle and the staff of the Arizona State Museum for even considering me for seeing my photos and for wanting me to contribute to this exhibit. Thank you very much. Also to my family for always letting me take their photos, for letting me record their happiness, pain, suffering, all of it. Um, to the other people in my images that posed or even reluctantly let me take their photos, thank you. And uh, let's see. Thank you, Mr. Wagner, my high school photography teacher, for always telling us to carry your camera with you because you don't know what you see, and this is the proof. Also, prints are available in the gift shop on your way out. Okay, that's that's a joke. Um, you can find me on Instagram or even read more about my photos on my blog, but, you know, it's older. So, you know, that's it. There you go. Thank you.